Good morning, everybody, and welcome to a Tuesday with Luther. This morning, I was reading the Treasury of Daily Prayer, and the Gospel lesson, or the New Testament lesson, in the Treasury today was from Matthew 6. And one of the key texts within the chapter of Matthew 6 is when Christ educates and teaches his apostles about worrying and why the baptized shouldn't do it. And he points to examples like the birds of the air, the lilies of the field. And he says, with all your worrying, can you add an inch, an hour to your life? And the answer at the end of the day is no, you can't. And he says, oh, you of little faith, or even better, you of little trust. Look at how God provides for all these other things. And you are of much more value than they are. So why worry? He'll take care of you. Stop worrying. For seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. All these things in life shall be added unto you. Matthew 6, 33. And then 34. Worry not for tomorrow, for today has enough troubles in itself to worry about. So live, pray, and let God take care of everything else. But as I was reading it, I recalled a quote from Luther when he meditated on the sparrows. And there's this great volume called What Luther Says. It's a good little resource. It takes a lot of different quotes. It's a topical. So if you want to know what did Luther say about worrying, you can turn here and it says there's a section on worry where Luther talks about things that concern the Christian and they're worrying about things in this life. So one of the little quotes Luther has is it says, The Lord cites the example of the other creatures that we may learn from them to trust God and not to worry. For the birds fly about before our eyes. We may well take our hats off to them and with little credit to ourselves say, My dear doctor, I must confess that I do not possess the ability you possess. You sleep in your little nest at night without any worry. In the morning you arise, are joyous and of good cheer. Sit on a tree and sing, praise and thank God. Then you go in search of your food and find it. For shame. Why have I, old fool that I am, not learned to do the same thing? I who have so much reason to do so. And yet we cannot stop this shameful worrying. We look at the example of the birds of the heavens, the flowers in the field, all of the creatures that are taken care of by our Lord. And it's the law preaching to us, saying, stop. Stop being so concerned about everyday things. Not that you shouldn't be a good steward of them, not that you shouldn't take care of things, but what is your worrying going to do for you? Is it going to add anything to it? Psalm 127 speaks of this when it says, Why do you rise up in vain in the morning to do work when it's the Lord who builds the house? And this relates to everything, to the, your family life, to your job, to the church, to this world, to society, everything. If the Lord does not build it and bless, then nothing good will happen. The greatest thing we have is prayer. Praying in the morning and praying in the evening. And as Luther says, in another quote, he says, Pray and let God take care of it. Or even better, let God worry. Let Him concern Himself with your well-being, with your family's well-being, with the church's well-being, with the world's well-being. Let Him do it. And He has. Has He not? Has our Lord not taken care of all things for us in His death on the cross? Is that not where our salvation was won and purchased for us? By the blood of Christ we are healed, cleansed, renewed, forgiven. And in our baptism, given that gift of the cross, that gift of forgiveness, of eternal life in the midst of death, and of salvation in the midst of condemnation, the gift of the cross is given to us in our baptism given to us in the Lord's Supper, strengthened and renewed there in the physical bodily presence of Christ, body and blood and the bread and wine. And then that good news proclaimed to us in the gospel, in holy absolution. So let's pray, and let's let God do the worrying for us. For does he not take care of the birds of the air and the lilies of the field, so shall he take care of you.
And even though you and I don't trust and we have little trust, it's not our trust that saves us. It's the blood of Christ that does. And it cleanses you this day. You are forgiven. You are taken care of. Be at peace. I pray that this message helps you a little bit today and helps you with the week ahead as you face the many dangers and chances in this life that you have the one assurance that your Lord Christ shall never leave you nor forsake you, but will always take care of you. Peace be with you all.